Good to go, Dan. I'm good wherever you are. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we can give a couple more minutes to see if we can get some council members to show up. <laughs> and actually, I was, I was waiting for you to say you were born ready. course I started sending him a text. <laughs> <laughs> work session item and that is to discuss the draft of the comprehensive plan we've got our our uh, friend Dan Gardner from Hazel Levine here to uh, present so Dan welcome thank you good to see you again likewise it's always a pleasure to be back in my namesake town uh, uh, Want to just launch in, or are we gotta? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, the meeting tonight really is, as it's called, is a work session. It's really to just go through kind of the the elements of the plan. Uh, you're not expected to have digested this and to give us feedback or take action tonight. If there's time for that. You can come back, digest it a little more, look at it, read it, uh, and then get back. Uh, through Mike and Cheryl and some other comments that you might have or some things that you want to discuss. But it's really to give you, afford you the opportunity to understand you know, the, the process because it's been a long, it's been about a year, I think it's about almost exactly a year ago that I was standing up here. Uh, but it's a process of uh, going through from the very start of that kickoff through where we are here tonight of uh, reviewing the, the plan elements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through not the entire plan page by page, but just that, go through the key elements of the plan and then open it up for 
So any questions that you have or comments? I understand you've got a long night ahead of you, so I'll try to give you a little bit of room at the end to you know, get something to eat and uh, decompress a little bit. Uh, so this is the, the final draft, if you will, that's uh, gone through a uh, public process and it's gone through the Planning Commission and gone through the Steering Committee. Uh, the contents of the plan is really broken up into these 11 sections, the introduction chapter, the community profile goes through the community setting and then the uh, elements of you know, what makes Gardner Gardner. Uh, public participation process, vision goals and objectives, the land use and development uh, pieces, and we'll go through what all those are, the different sections of that. Transportation mobility, uh, in addition to House of Levine, we also had HDR on our team, and HDR uh, is a long history of working with the city on transportation issues, and, and they looked at the transportation elements and the mobility elements of the plan. Uh, community facilities and services, excuse me, parks and open space, image and identity, sustainability framework, and the implementation piece. Uh, first, the introduction is just somewhat self-explanatory. It's just it's introducing you know, what is the plan. Keeping in mind, one of the things that's important, some of these things may seem mundane or road or like, hey, we already knew that, but a comprehensive plan is designed to be appealing to a wide range of audiences, some of which have no idea where Gardner is, some that won't even be thinking about it for a couple years or several years out, and then others of trying to get a better context. It could be a developer looking for investment opportunities. It could be somebody thinking about moving here uh, from a residential standpoint. It could be somebody thinking about relocating a business to Gardner. Uh, it has to be able to tell a story to anybody who is picking up the plan. Uh, too often, I think old plans just were a lot of text and maybe a map stuck in the back and really didn't tell a story or really weren't really designed to be user friendly, uh, if you will. I don't like that term, but it just that's exactly what the plan needs to be. Is it needs to be a, appealing and, and available and easy to use for uh, several different audiences. So by putting in the introduction and the community profile, uh, laying the, line, the lines of where is the city in the context of the competitive region, uh, what are the demographics, what are some of the trends, what are the, the key businesses, those things are always at the front end of the, of the plan. Uh, as part of our process, we did an existing conditions analysis that's at the front end, and that's telling us here, where, what is that starting point? Because every comprehensive plan has to do three things for you. And it needs to tell you where you are, then you have to define where do you want to be, where do you want to go, and then how do you get there on the implementation side. So this first section is looking at all the past planning efforts and recognize a lot of time and effort was put in by a lot of people over years. Some of the information may be outdated, some of it needed to be revised, some of the studies were came to fruition and were already done. Uh, but you need to know what those efforts are. So going through all the relevant plans and studies, having an influence on the city going forward. That's a part of the existing conditions analysis that is done on the front end. Uh, looking at the existing land use and where where that start, what is the starting point, of the different types of uses. Uh, looking at the existing transportation network. Uh, and then, as I said, looking at those kind of key socioeconomic data and demographic profiles that kind of define what the city is and what the trends are. You know, clearly, there was a lot of growth, um, you know, 10, 20 years ago, but now, you know, that's sort of 15 years ago. That's certainly slow. But what are the projections? What is the county looking at in terms of projections? All that goes into that existing conditions analysis. Uh, the public participation process. You don't do a plan to people, you plan with people. The public participation process was a key part of that uh, planning with the community. Uh, it was a transparent process, it was an open process, it was very involved. We had community meetings, we had key person interviews, we had the, the steering committee, as I said, a 20 plus member steering committee, uh, the vetted things as we went through. Uh, and then we also had uh, project websites set up. 
uh, that was active throughout the entire process. Uh, we were, you know, thought it was important to keep the website up so that people continually had input and still could pull up documents and read things as the process went along. One of the things on the website was a mapping tool. Where people were allowed to make their own maps, putting in key data points. So this is just what you're looking at here is a graphic of data points that were put on by members of the community that were uh, utilizing the mapping tool. You know, issues, concerns, assets, things that people would like to see addressed. This was augmenting the questionnaires that were online and all the other public outreach that was uh, conducted. So some more of the maps that we'll get at were public safety concerns to uh, poor parents to, as I said, some of the things that people would like to see in terms of uses. Uh, then created the vision goals and objectives. If anybody recalls, we had a visioning workshop where people marked up maps and we had tables in here and we had tables out in the lobby and the uh, public came out and was set at tables and they did their own planning on, on the base maps that were put on the tables. Uh, that was a great way to get people involved in the process, get people excited and some great ideas came out of that. Uh, then we also started to craft that vision statement of what, what is the city going to look like 15, 20 years out? You know, what are people's ideas of you know, the gardener of the future? Uh, and creating that vision statement in the year 2035, Gardner will be, actually, we went through several different scenarios of what people want to see for the future of the city. Uh, crafted goals and objectives for each of the key areas, goals being those kind of bigger things, and then the objectives of being those more obtainable things of, of how we get reach the goals, from neighborhoods and housing to commercial areas to all the different sections of the plan. Uh, then next, according to the land use and development plan. Now we've, we've gotten into the planning side of things. Once we formulated the existing conditions, went through the visioning workshops and all the uh, outreach on the front end and getting the community input, we start creating the land use and development plan. Uh, and for each section, and we'll go through that in a second, first there's a larger land use plan for the city as a whole, and that's what you're looking at right now. Uh, and then we start going into the different areas. And if you notice that one of the things that was in part of a lengthy discussion and ultimately uh, is the way it is in the plan was the whole southeast quadrant and what potentially could be there. Uh, there's a lot of discussion and it really was decided that that you know, should be addressed and we'll get into it in a second in a few different ways, but really allowing for market driven opportunities uh, to kind of guide what there's a longer term prospect. So we're looking at sometimes market opportunities that may not be there today that could be there, you know, 10, 10 years out. Uh, and that's 